Welcome to the Disrupt TV Tech Series, presented and powered by Point Click Technologies. I will be your host. My name is Zainab Sise, Digital Marketing and Communications Manager for Point Click Technologies. And with me today is the founder and CEO of Point Click, Mr. Malik Khan. Thank you, Malik Khan, for joining us on our first episode. Zainab, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. So let's get to business, Malik Khan. Why Gambia? Well, first of all, I'm Gambian. I was born here. Um, second of all, Gambia is known as the smallest country in inland Africa with just less than 2.5 million people mm. and a GDP of $1.9 billion. Wow. People also tend to know Gambia as a great tourist destination because of its nice beaches, um, great weather. But the reason Gambia is because also it has a thriving ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem as well as tech ecosystem. So for that reason, Point Click embarked on setting up shop here about four years ago. And our entire goal has been to strengthen the ecosystem um, through different initiatives that we've launched over the past four years. Well, that's, that's great. But tell me, Malik, what are some of the uh, community uh, contributions you've made here in the Gambia? I believe Point Click Technologies have been here for over four years now, um, if I'm not wrong. So what are some of these contributions you have done for um, improving, let's say, the Gambian ecosystem at large? Sure. Um, so four years ago, back in 20, just towards the end of 2017, we launched a program called Innovate Gambia, mm. which included a few initiatives. Um, one of them in the area of tech is building the first innovation and tech hub within the country today called the Disruptive Lab. So the Disruptive Lab has been in operation now two years. You know, that was one way that we've contributed towards that because we've been able to empower a lot of local startups that have been looking for a place that not only to work with stability of internet power and things like that, but also an area where you can work with like-minded individual by creating, you know, synergies We've been able to create partnerships within, within the lab here with people working together. So that's one area that we've, 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 you know, we've contributed. But within the Disruptive Lab, we've also done quite a, you know, a bit of events within the ecosystem. Um, okay, so allow me to ask, has the, the, the inception of the Innovate Gambia at large um, inspired other Gambians, or from the, not just from the diaspora, but from the Gambians within, um, try to come up with other initiatives uh, similar to that, obviously, with trying to improve the Gambian ecosystem through innovation, entrepreneurship, technology, and leadership? Yeah, um, definitely, I believe so, because that was one of our goals, is how can we empower not just the locals, but anybody else that was thinking of investing in Gambia to see us do it, would be like, oh, okay. Would they feel confident in doing that? Somebody actually took money to come build something. Um, you know, we've had, since we launched the hub, other hubs are around as well. So, you know, in terms of that growing, it's been really great. Um, so now what we are hoping for the next phase is how can all of these ecosystem players now have some things to, to do together? Because right now, in my view, there's been a lot of silos. You know, different hubs are doing different programs on their own. They're doing different events. Um, so, you know, for communities to thrive, especially in a startup community, you have to come together. Um, so our next phase is by some of the things that maybe we'll talk about later on on some of the events that we're doing, some of the programs that we want to put together. It'll bring the community together. So where we're doing hubs are kind of partnering to do programming so we can attract more people and be able to do a better job. Mm, that actually brings me to my next question on how is it, 
um, how have you used the power of collaboration, um, not just with um, other hubs, but with other organizations as well, to try to, um, to try to reach that one objective that you all stand for? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things I kind of realized, or even before investing here, there's always been chatter that Gambia can't get nothing done because they lack capacity, mm -hmm. especially in government. But if you look at most international organizations outside of the Gambia, they are being run by really, really smart Gambians. So from a capacity standpoint, I think we have enough capacity to revamp this whole country. So when I thought of that, we created a, an, um, a program called Who is Who in Tech. The, the technology people in the diaspora, through this Who is Who in Tech in the diaspora, mm -hmm. we were able to connect them with some of the key players here in the, in the local ecosystem. So we've done two years already. So we're actually doing the third one again um, in January of 2022, mm -hmm. where, you know, I mean, it's been, it's been phenomenal. I mean, to the point of one of the local community companies that we've created and another company um, in the U.S. that one of the diaspora people work for, they do training for software developers. He was able to convince his company to sponsor a training event locally here, and they trained 10 developers that are now, you know, interning in some organizations and the training was actually delivered by a local tech ecosystem. So just that one collaboration, a tech company in the US, a diaspora Gambian working there, convinced them to invest money here and have a local, a local company deliver the training. That to me is win. So if we can create a lot of those, can you imagine the outcome, right? And this is why I believe it's not about one, it's not about a point click, it's not about a disruptive lab, but it's about what can we all do to kind of bring together our collective power and empower a generation of the future that's going to kind of help, you know, bring this country to where it needs to be. Okay, Malik, so you've talked about the who is who in tech, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it through the tech ecosystem here, the Gambia at large, I would say. Um, however, have there been any other events that you've tried to, like, um, you know, come up with that would bring some of these people together. Not just that, but have you tried to collaborate with um, other, let's say, freelancers here in the Gambia, very smart and very talented and knowledgeable people here in their respectable fields? Absolutely. We've always done um, events that always bring people together. Mm -hmm. I think our very first event that we launched here was Tech Night Out, yeah. where every month we sponsor the food and whatever and bring people here and just watch a random video, whether it's educational or a movie or whatever. But then when COVID came, we had to stop it. I think we did maybe three, mm. three, three episodes of that. Um, you know, we just launched um, a networking series called Tech Working After Work, where every Friday, every second Friday of every month, we have different special guests that will come in. Mm. Last, we did the first one last, last month. We sponsored it. Um, so that's one way. And then we have a year of programming for that that we are prepared to actually fund. But again, is, there's a lot of people in the ecosystem in the technology, but we don't know who they are. Yeah. So this is really to bring them out, to come out, let's learn who we are, let's talk about some of the things that we're working on. But we always care to, to compete. Competition is good. Understanding your strengths and your weaknesses is great. That way you can get better. This is not about that. This is about learning who you can work with, collaborating, and then moving on to doing bigger and better things. Wow, that is phenomenal. That is fantastic. Thank you so very much, Malik Khan. But I am sure everybody out there that is listening and watching us would like to know exactly what is the Disruptive TV Tech Series? What is your objective for this whole video series that we've got, um, that we've planned out so far for, um, for the Gambia? Yeah, <clears throat> a few reasons. While we're doing all of these um, events, sometimes it's also really critical to make sure you're talking to the key players. Mm -hmm. So Disrupt TV was really, it's an idea that came about, um, and we talk about the first season being on the foundation. Yeah. Now, a thriving ecosystem is great, but if the foundation is weak, it becomes a problem. It's like trying to build a five-story building on a weak foundation. Mm -hmm. It'll stand, but after a few years, it'll collapse, right? That's not what we want. Um, so our goal is how can we create a platform where it's only 15 minutes, nothing more, of bringing people from different areas of the tech ecosystem and also entrepreneurial ecosystem to kind of get the facts. Yeah. For example, communication is a weak foundation. It's weak within here. Why? Because we have one ACE connection. So if that goes down, 
the entire internet goes down for everybody. Why is it that we don't have a backup? We can bring experts in that area that know the facts to really talk about some of those limitations. And the more facts we know, the better decisions we can make, the better investments we can attract to kind of build those. Power also is really, really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. So trying to build a solid data center here, it doesn't really make sense because the amount of power that's required to generate data centers and the cost is just very prohibitive. So how can we have this conversation, maybe invite somebody from NAREC? What are some of the future plans of making sure the power is reduced? Or how can you partner with some of the telecommunications company to build a data center where we can reduce the cost? So all these things, that's what tech series is really about with the Disrupt TV, um, just to have that conversation. And it needs to be an honest conversation around some of the things that we have. Sometimes we boast about areas of that we are thriving, but we all know the reality that we face. It's, yeah. it's, you know, the terrain here in operating in tech is really, really difficult. Um, it, adoption for it hasn't really been there. So one is to sell value. One is to really understand what the issues are. And three is how can we attract investment to really start solving these so that we have a solid foundation within the next five years. If we can have a solid foundation, I think Gambia can be one of those strong countries within the ecosystem, mm. not just in the West, but in the entire Africa. And for me, this is why we're taking the initiative as point click, not to be show off, but more of let's just start it. Because yeah. it'll be something that it will be out there in the ecosystem. Even we don't have to be running these things. It will be run by maybe some of the other organizations. Yeah. But you always have to be willing to start, fund it, and go. I mean, even this video series that we're shooting, we're paying for that yeah. by a local video company that's, that does all these productions. So again, we are supporting the locals to be able to do production, to be able to do some of these programs. Um, and I think at the end of the day, not only will everybody win, mm -hmm. um, but it will drive the country, the country where it needs to be. Well, folks, there you have it. Um, Malik Khan of Point Click Technologies. Um, this whole series, like we're talking about, the first season is all about the foundation. How can we identify some of these problems that we're facing or some of these uh, issues that we're facing here in the Gambia? What are some of the things that we can do? Have honest conversations and some of the things that we can do to partner and collaborate and try to build a better Gambia, not just for us Gambians, but for others that are out there and want to come in and invest and, um, you know, just try, to, try and see how best we can build our economy in the next, let's say, five or 10 years, right? So thank you so much for being here with us, Mr. Khan. It's been such a pleasure learning so much from you. And I know a lot of people here in the Gambia don't even realize um, a lot of these things that you've mentioned or that are happening. And I'm sure these are going to be some very thought-provoking conversations that we're gonna be having here. And I cannot wait. I'm pretty excited about it myself. And um, without further ado, I am your host. My name is Zainab Sise, Digital Marketing and Communications Manager for Point Click Technologies. If you want to reach out to us on any of our social medias, please feel free. We are on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, and please visit our website um, to learn more about us. We are on www.pointclick.net. Without further ado, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next episode.